All right, let's go through the rules for rays in converging or concave mirrors. Um, there are four what are called the principal rays that we're going to be talking about. We're going to look at four rays that have very specific rules that involve them. All right, so the first one um, we're going to do using red pen um, is a ray parallel to the principal axis reflects back through the focal point. All right, so here we have our curved mirror. Here we have our principal axis, all right? And we have a couple of points marked off on this line. F is the focal point, C is the center of curvature. Now a reminder, the C of the center of curvature comes from this mirror. If we extended it out and made it a giant sphere, that would be the center of that giant sphere, okay? And then F, this focal point, is exactly halfway between the mirror and the center of curvature. Now where this principal axis crosses the mirror, it's marked with a V here, that is our vertex, okay? So again, our first ray, we have a ray parallel to the principal axis. So we'll have a ray come in from way over here and it comes along parallel to the principal axis. Now, a reminder as before, we need to show the direction of travel of these rays. Now, previously, any kind of drawings we did, we had a single source of light in the middle and then the rays were coming out. Now, we're gonna have rays going all over the place, all right? It's gonna make things really complicated if you're not paying attention and not keeping track of where all those rays are going. So, make sure you keep the direction of travel on the ray. So, this one is coming in parallel to the principal axis. That means it's gonna reflect back off of the mirror through the focus, all right? So again, make sure there's an arrow on there indicating, indicating the direction of travel. So this is ray number one. So ray number two, we're gonna do using blue. Uh, and ray number two is a ray passing through the center of curvature will reflect straight back. So if I have a ray going through C and hitting the mirror, it doesn't matter where I point it, it can go into any direction, it's gonna bounce straight back. All right, so if I start it from out here and bring it in to the mirror, so again, our direction of travel, make sure we're indicating what direction that ray is traveling, it's gonna bounce straight back through. So I can then say, no, oh, it's not just going one direction, it's actually going in two directions here. All right, so this ray is ray number two, and that goes into the mirror and then straight back out to the center of curvature. Our third ray, if we have a ray passing through the focus, it will reflect back um, parallel to the principal axis. So if I have a ray that say, for example, comes up here, so it starts from way over here somewhere and comes up through the focus. And once again, don't forget to include the direction that that ray is traveling. It will bounce back parallel to the principal axis. All right, so including our direction arrow, something you might notice, so this is ray number three. Something you might notice about rays one and three, they're basically the exact reverse of each other. So in ray one, it was parallel to the principal axis, it went back through the focus. In ray three, it went through the focus, and bounces back parallel to the principal axis, all right? And then finally, ray number four, if we have a ray that is aimed at the vertex, so if it hits right here, right where that principal axis meets, uh, meets the mirror, it's gonna follow the law of reflection. And that law, if you all remember, is the angle of incidence will equal the angle of reflection. So if I bring this ray in, we're gonna use orange or yellow for that, so it comes up here. Now for this, we should be using a protractor. Now, this is where the principal axis becomes really helpful because before it was really easy to tell where that, um, where that, where the normal was because we always measured the angle of incidence from the vertex, or sorry, from the normal to the incident ray, and then we would measure the reflected or the angle of reflection from the normal to the reflected ray. But in this, 
using a curved surface, it's really hard to figure out what the normal is unless we point it right at that principal axis. If we have a line that goes through the center and hits the mirror, it is always going to hit it at exactly 90 degrees. So if you look here, it's hitting at 90 degrees. This ray here is hitting at 90 degrees. That's why it went straight back. If I had another ray that went here, it would bounce straight back, all right? So wherever we create this principal axis, when it goes through the center of curvature and hits that surface of the mirror, it's always gonna be 90 degrees. So that makes it really easy for us to come in here and measure, well, the angle of incidence is, let's say about 42 and a half degrees. So I can come back here on the other side and I can measure 10, 20, 30, 40, about two and a half right there. And I can draw the reflected ray. All right, so that is ray number four. So those are the four, um, the four principal rays for dealing with a converging